Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are doing our shortstop top 10 position preview for 2024. And as always, uh, I am going to be your host here with Dap Scout JP. And I'm brought to you by, not brought to you by, I'm with co hosting with uh, Joe Bond. H how you doing, Joe? Uh, good. I, apparently, I'm, a, uh, I'm the new sponsor of the show. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest, the, the muscle milk that you're drinking constantly and all those things definitely sponsor the show because you're just so ripped. So awesome. <laughs> you're, you're the, you're the epitome of what every six year old should look like. So it's uh, I, I, 50, whatever. Um, you know, I think that, I think it's awesome. Uh, as always, we invite you to come on down to fantasy six pack.net and subscribe to become an all access member. Uh, we have the promo code to give you 15% off. That is F6PMLB24. And you can subscribe right now and get 15% off that before the MLB season starts. And we have a whole bunch of great tools to help you win your league. Also, uh, we ask you to look at starting your league in Fantrax or moving your league to Fantrax. It's free for a lot of different league uh, setups. And for those that you know require a lot of customization, uh, when you do have to pay, God, it's so much cheaper <laughs> and the support is phenomenal. I can't say enough about fan tracks. I mean, if you have any questions, please DM uh, Joe or myself and we'll be happy to uh, tell you some more about our own personal experience with both of those. So without further ado, let's get into the short stops um, and the preview that uh, Mr. Joe Bond uh, published there at fantasy six pack.net. This is what the article looks like. This is what we're going to be talking about. But before we do and talk more about your actual rankings, let's hold your feet to the fire, Joe, and talk about the much ripped on. I mean, it's all over Twitter. It's it's crazy. Uh, MLB Network uh, top 10 rankings of their shortstop. I, if you look at any of the top 10 rankings, nobody likes them. I don't agree with this one at all. But the hate <laughs> that it's getting is crazy to me. kind of like it. Uh, in the sense that it's exciting to see people excited, but some names that aren't going to be in your top 10, JP Crawford, uh, Bobby Wood Jr. number nine, it just blows my mind. Uh, Willie Adamus. Yeah. Uh, and the one big omission that I see here on this list uh, is Dansby Swanson, uh, number four. He's not even on your list. Defend yourself, sir, before we give you, because Chicago Cup fans are going to come for you at your home. I mean, look, you've got to also consider that these MLB rankings are taking into account defense. We don't care about defense, except for the fact that if it's bad enough that it takes them off the field, that's what we care about. Okay. In most cases, it's not. Um, Swan look, Swanson's been awesome the last three years. Uh, you know, took a slight dip back in his numbers from 2022 um, last season. Of course, he played in fewer games. Um, I've always, I've always been a fan of his. Like, I think he's top 12 material, um, not quite top 10. He doesn't have quite the upside. I mean, he's going to be what he is, um, you know, 20, 22, 23 home run power, maybe a dozen steals two fifty ish batting average. You know, he's going to be on that Cubs team though, that is losing a lot of firepower this off season. So you know, they, they sort of surprised everybody last year and were able to score a bunch of runs. Um, that might not be the case this year. So that that played a factor in it. And there's just some young up-and-comers here in the shortstop position that, you know, just going to overtake him just based off pure upside and, and potential. I mean, that's that's really all there is to it. It's not, it's not that I don't like Swanson. Yeah, it's, just a, it's a numbers thing at this point, right? I mean, if mm -hmm. we're going to talk about top 10 players overall that you know, non-fantasy related, absolutely dance response. Yeah, I mean, he he's a, he's a great defender. Like, defensive war, one of the best. Now, I disagree with you. I, I definitely would have him in my top 10 list. But as you know, I don't rank players because I hate the fighting <laughs> that I have to do when I rank picks. But he's definitely in my personal <laughs> top 10. The one name on here that was surprising to me, not because of his stats. I mean, he was, sorry, he was surprising last year considering how much he played and who he played for. And some of his stats was JP Crawford just real quickly there. I, I just, uh, you know, yeah, I think he's just outside of your top 10. I don't see him in my top 10, but man, he was really useful on a lot of fantasy leagues and a lot of fantasy teams. Do you have any comments about the man who's named after me, of course, JP Crawford? I mean, he was he was useful, but at the same time, though, like I mean, nineteen home runs—that's okay, a career high by almost 
by yeah, double more than double his next best uh, career high in runs scored. Um, 65 RBI, okay, but that's also a career high. Uh, 266 batting average, it's okay. Two steals. I, I mean, I don't really know what he does for you to like. I mean, he's fine. He's a middle infielder type player that you know can fill the gap. You know, in in those deeper leagues, but I, I nowhere near my top ten. Yep, absolutely great. Okay, sir, let's look at number ten on the top ten shortstop list. I can't wait to see these transitions. <laughs> Ellie Start off hot. Yeah, I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, you know, we talked about Matt McClain in our second base. Um, you know, thing and in, in the kind of the other one of the other names that came out was Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, he was. You was just must watch TV there for a while. I mean, I just love it all day, every day. He was so exciting to watch. It's just going to be a matter of what are we going to get next year when he plays over, you know, 100 games. And I think that's really going to be the, the kind of key, you know, the adjustments. It's a long season. What, you know, what did we do here? But talent is undeniable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, just want to just want to throw it out there because I know we talked about it at nauseum with Matt McLean. <laughs> And uh-huh. his ADP. Do you want to take a wild guess is to know is to tell me what this guy be top his ADP is? Top 25. 28. Now, this ah, was a couple really? weeks ago, so it might be yeah. different, but still. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean look. unreal. Like he is going at Boba Shett level. <laughs> I'm sorry, I almost heard Boba Fett, uh, Boba Fett uh, level. Uh sorry I've been watching too much. I do I do but... like Star Wars, but uh, uh but yeah, um, it's the thing is there is like I get the excitement. He's an amazing player to watch. Value-wise, that there's none. There's, there's negative value at that point. No, no, no. I mean, look, here's the thing. He came out like a rocket, dude. Oh, unbelievable. 307 batting average in June, 21 games, three home runs, 21 runs, uh, stole nine bases. And then, look, the steals were there all year long. So don't worry, he's going to steal bases. Right. The power is going to be, you know, he... He's easily a 25, 25 guy, 25, 30 guy. That's going to be there. It's his batting average that really scares me. Uh, it, you know, the rest of the months, 238, 198, 202. Uh, that's, he's got to make some adjustments and drastic adjustments. 33% K rate only walks 8% of the time. That's not a good ratio there. The 33% K rate alone is bad. Um, I mean, look, he's got all the talent in the world to, to do it. I believe it's there, but I'm not quite buying into the hype yet. And it might be, there's going to be some adjustments that he's going to have to make in order for me to really buy in. Yeah, I think right now this offseason is going to be the most value you could probably get for Ellie De La Cruz for hype versus actual value i think right now if you you probably get three four just ridiculous veterans for him i mean if that's what kind of his positioning is at adp level but you know if you look at his minor league averages right he was never this low as 305 297 things of that nature by the way just one ridiculous stat just for you to be aware of his iso last year in triple a mind you a 21 year old only 38 games 335 that's that's video game set on easy two player with no second player. I mean, it's, that's not mm-hmm. dumb. But the thing is, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, major league pitchers start getting the book on you. They start pitching you differently, and we saw what happens there. And the frustration, but the, your the speed is undeniable. The the, the things are here, right? Is you're not going to get much many RBIs here, uh, which is kind of crazy considering you know the firepower that's there. But I expect those runs to come up considerably, maybe over 90 easily there. Uh, but it's going to be a matter of you're still going to have a lot of growing pains this season. And But it's going to be so much fun to watch. Yep. I just <clears throat> all day, every day, I'll be, I will yeah. be will definitely be pulling up some of that Reds machine. So, okay. Um, sir, number nine. Matt teammate. Whoa, that's never happened before. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so Matt McClay, we've covered uh, on our uh, video from yesterday, of course, mm-hmm. on YouTube. It shows up at all different times. Uh, so he's in our second base and um, preview. Now he's obviously in our shortstop preview as well. Uh, 
what are some of the key things here uh, from his uh, teammate? Uh, if you want to do a deep dive, please look at our second phase preview uh, rankings as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll just kind of recap it real quick. I mean, good, talented player, going to be fine overall, but, you know, don't buy last year's number. It was a bit of a mirage. They were just a little inflated. Um, some of the metrics don't say that he's going to be able to continue what he did. Yeah, the only other thing there is I, I didn't push back on Joe, but I, I did tell, you know, say that he was an incredibly passive um, on some of the pitching that he saw. So there is mm -hmm. some chance for him to improve while his other numbers come down. A 385 BABIP last year is nuts. That is coming down big time as well. So there's definitely going to be some regression, but I do see some positive movement as well with Matt McClain. You cannot go wrong with Matt McClain and Ellie De La Cruz, but I am absolutely no way, shape, or form drafting them. And again, Matt McClain's ADP we looked at last year. I mean, last uh, last show was um, in the forties. Forty five. So for, you, so for you to get Ellie De La Cruz and Matt McClain, you literally have to go back to back almost um, in that second, third round. That's mm. no way. This is there's just too much there that I need to grab elsewhere. Um, no way I'm touching that uh, at that price, but mm -hmm. I love the talent. And as a fan of baseball, you just got to love watching the claim to like the work. All right. Number eight. Okay. Um, <laughs> Neil Cruz. Here's somebody who is ancient compared to the last few guys we just talked about, but it's just as fun to watch. Um, if there's only one Achilles heel here, can you can you think of what I'm about to talk about, Joe? Hmm. Games played. Uh, let's Just let's maybe. go over let's go over the numbers here. Last year, nine. <laughs> year before, <laughs> 87. Um, with of course the 55 in uh, AAA, and then in 2021, uh, if you add all of them together, it's a total of 70. So yeah, uh, not good, injury, Bob. Injury concerns, <laughs> but when he's healthy, uh, he's. I mean, is is it wrong for me to say he's very Eli De La Cruz where we expect him to be? I mean, you know, he's got the speed. Yeah. Boy, he's got the power. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, seventeen home runs in eighty-seven uh, games. Uh, the RBIs, runs. Nobody's pushing him for playing time. It's just that K rate is just nuts. Yeah, I mean, he granted super small sample size last year, <laughs> yes, but he dropped yes. it to 20, yeah. walked 70 percent of the time, 17 percent of the time, that's, and 40 plate know. appearances. I mean, that's that's, that's I mean, almost look, an entire that's, season, yeah. That's that's a pretty small sample size, I get it, but hey, you like to at least see that, right? right. He's not gonna have the speed of a cruise. I think cruise has a much higher ceiling than or wow, cruise over cruise, uh. De La Cruz has a much higher ceiling than O'Neill Cruz. Okay. Um, but I think we've already seen O'Neill Cruz, like if he can stay healthy. Um, I think he's going to provide more power um, than De La Cruz would. So that's why I put him ahead of him again. Yeah, it's it's the injury risk. I, I totally get why I mean, this guy is a freak when he's on the field, though, man. Like he he's. At six seven, like nobody thought he would stick at shortstop, and he's proven that wrong. He's right. just, you know, it was a freak injury last year too, though. Like that broken, oh. what was it, broken leg, uh, ankle, yes. whatever it was. Yeah, like on that slide to home, like that was just that sucked. Um, you know, he he started off really well, so I was, you know, looking forward to seeing what that, you know, <clears throat> what his season was gonna end up being. I mean, he had three steals in nine games with the new stolen base totals uh, rules. It would have been interesting to see what he could have done. So we've done some, uh, you know, exit velocity and you know, launch angle type stuff. But I, I do want to point out in 2022, his max exit velocity was an insane 122.4 miles per hour. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, missiles. I mean, launch angle of eight, uh, but doesn't when matter. It, when you hit it that fast, no one wants to catch that ball or can, you know, figure out what, I mean, that's just, that's just stupid. Uh, this is a line drive home run, like gone. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. We good. Yeah. But the other thing, and just again, for those people that are watching, trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to choose between players? Home ballpark, you, I mean, yes, you have the Rockies, but from a hitter's perspective, the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati is 
the most hitter friendly ballpark. So Matt McLean, Ellie De La Cruz is playing in the best ballpark possible for a hitter. But again, you're not paying for that ADP. So just if you ever need to decide between Cruz and De La Cruz, De La Cruz wins it all day long just from that whole ballpark perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, True. All right. Number seven. I can't believe you're not wearing an Orioles hat. Gunnar Henderson. Uh, there it is. There <laughs> it is. Now, uh, Gunnar Henderson is going to be the last of our repeats uh, moving forward. And by repeats, I mean he shows – Gunnar Henderson is going to show up on our third base uh, top ten. Shocking. Shocking. I, I hope I didn't ruin it, it for anybody. And, this, and the sixth sense, by the way, he sees dead people. Uh, but um, – uh, Gunnar Henderson is going to show up on our thir- uh, third base top 10, but let's go ahead and talk about somebody who was drafted first on almost every kind of uh, prospect list, um, along with his battery mate. Well, not battery mate, sorry, his, his, uh, his catcher friend. Uh, what do we love about him as a Orioles fan and as a baseball fan in general? Yeah, I mean... Potential wise, like I I think, you know, he's going to be a very good all around hitter. Um, Is he going to have kind of the, you know, is he ever going to reach the, you know, 35, 40 home run totals? I'm not sure that's him. You know, I don't think we're going to get 20, 25 steals out of him, but he's a good contact hitter. Um, This is a, you know, pretty good offense now in Baltimore. He's hitting right in the heart of it. So you're going to get a lot of the good counting stats from him. It's kind of weird, though, to look at his 2022. And, you know, if you look at, or sorry, 2023, uh, April and May were atrocious. And I remember before the season started, like he, he had like, he had an ADP last year of like, I want to say it was like 70 something, maybe 80 something. Absolutely. It was like because a bunch of the top th- uh, third basemen went right, and I know we're talking short stops, but you know it was third base is where he was at last year in for drafts. Mm-hmm. So you, you had like all the top third basemen, and then there was Henderson, and then it was like this massive gap, Matt, yeah. and everybody else. And I was like, Gunner got pushed so far up because everybody was afraid of that gap in the yeah. tiers. Absolutely, and I went, I'm not paying up for that because I wasn't truly buying into you know the the potential and and the height yet right and man through april and may i looked brilliant 201 five home runs striking out a 31 percent rate i was like man i was right and then some and then june hit and it was like oh that's right i know how to hit a baseball 276 batting average dropped his strikeout rate at 23 percent um, you know, he's being more aggressive at the plate, walking less, which apparently is just something he needed to do, right? You know, as, as you kind of are saying with Matt McLean, like maybe don't be too passive, don't sit and wait for the perfect pitch. Sometimes just go get it, right? right? And that that does work for some hitters, and apparently it worked for Henderson. He ended up hitting twenty three total, uh, twenty three home runs during that time to bring his total up to twenty eight last year. Um, 52% hard hit rate, 92% 92 exit velocity. Um I could I could actually put him at number 6 on my list here. Um I could move him up in my th- I don't think there's anybody I'm moving him ahead of in the third base rankings, but in the shortstop rankings, I, I could you can make a case for, for number six, but there's a reason why number six is where he is. Yeah. I think also with gun, I, I agreed, right. We, we talked about it a lot in the preview last year uh, about the fact that he was too inflated. So people that are looking at drafting Ellie De La Cruz, Matt McClain, you know, this is what you might be staring at. Not the happy story at the end, right? The happy ending was great, but a definite uh, big drop off in the beginning is, from expectations of where things are going to happen. I and mean, we hope it turns out well for everybody, but that's, that's a rarity. And I think you're right. I think Gunnar Henderson got a lot of playing time and he was able to get consistent. So even when he was cold and even when it was going bad, he was starting to put in the work, seeing more pitches, recognizing those pitches and just getting more and more settled. But his mm-hmm. glove was helping as well. Like you could see, and there was a lot of articles as well, as his defense kind of continued to ramp up. He was never an issue with his glove. 
it, it just builds that confidence, builds that confidence and just broke out in a big way. I would yeah. love to see that, you know, kind of the 100 100 club there runs in RBIs. Uh, but it's always going to, yeah, it could happen. And uh, definitely rooting for that. And it's it's going to be. I, th- I think watch. the one thing that keeps his value down for fantasy is the just the lack of speed. Yeah. A lot of the guys ahead of him on this list are, are going to be able to bring more uh, more speed to the table. But again, how you set up your roster, uh, you know, you can always get a speed, an empty steel speed guy like um, the A's have. And we'll talk about him at another time as well. But, uh, you know, to, to make up for that. So number six, the guy who you might switch with Gunnar Henderson. Let's talk about him. Possibly CJ Abrams. All right. So Mr. Washington Nationals himself. Tell me why you kept him here and didn't put him, you know, put your your oil uh, above him. Yeah, it, it, this was a tough one, but I mean, the the drastic difference in stolen bases. I mean, Abram stole forty seven last year, eighteen home runs. I feel like you're gonna be able to make up the home runs. I know the new stolen base rules are there, and you're getting a lot of guys stealing more bases. But it's easier to make up 10 home runs, right, than it is 40, almost 40 steals. Like, that's a crazy number. Um, Yeah, it's a, you know, team isn't as good, so the runs in the RBI are, are, are dropping a little bit there. But, right. I mean, look, he's he's a young player, too. You could, you could see, you know, he's just 23. You can see even more growth from him as well this was a tough decision for me i I really struggled between having abrams and anderson at six seven and i I could easily see this swapping multiple times this off season you know the thing is too is that you know this isn't empty steals right uh you're doing 245 average with a 300 uh, on base percentage and a 400 slugging is not is not nothing i mean it's not you know blow the you know blow uh, the world it's WRC plus. So for those who don't know what WRC plus is, the um, 100 is league average. Mm-hmm. So anything below that is obviously less than league average. So 90 isn't great, but you're right. I mean, those 47 stolen bases with him not you know blowing up your average, not blowing up your OVP is phenomenal. And you're only losing like uh, so 30 ish RBIs um, if you pick up Gunner, but you're going to get a big drop off in stolen bases. Um, I, I think it's funny though that streamer and uh, you know ATCs and these other forecasts, which you see in that uh, column right below it, show a drop off in stolen bases and almost no movement in runs and RBIs. And and I gotta believe that yeah, his average is going up by like ten to fifteen points in each one. <laughs> exactly. So you know, like you're getting on base more, but you're not going to steal more bases. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I mean, don't I, I I think forty is 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 pretty respectable right. for. It's hard to predict 47 stolen bases for anybody. No, absolutely. But I, but for him to get on base more and his average, yet all his other counting stats kind of stay the same or get worse, mm. I, I just don't see that happening. So if, if his average goes up another 10, 15 points along with his OBP, all I can see is goodness. Happening, yeah, I mean, he doesn't strike out a lot. He just needs to make more solid contact. And maybe we see a little bit more power out of the bat too. That's what I really like is like there are a lot of places where you can see that he's already got the plate discipline. He just needs to bring better contact to the ball, and you're going to see more of everything else. Yeah, I mean, and his launch angle is great, 13.5 degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, exit, max exit velocity, respectable, 112. Uh, you're right, though. It just, uh, it's a matter of kind of – he was hitting in all fields, too. He wasn't getting pool happy. I mean, he, a lot of improvement there. Definitely like C.J. Abrams. Yeah. Um, just what's his, 31 yeah, barrels was pretty rough. That's That's what got me. Do you have his ADP by any chance up? What? Do you have his ADP um, up by any chance? Mm-hmm. Uh, 38. So him and Henderson are kind of back to back. Henderson being just in front of him at 35. Yeah, I mean. Oh. I get And I flip-flopped too. I, you know, on guarantee this is, I mean, and this is team makeup. Like this is, right. you know, this is how you're building a roster. If, if you are looking at taking one of them, you have to decide do you want more power or do you want more speed at this point? Yep. hundred percent. All right. 
Number five is going to cause a lot of issues, not because of where you rank them, but because of how much people were throwing tomatoes and all kinds of stuff when the season started, Francisco Lindor. I mean, that was a slow start. Uh, and my goodness, people were like, oh, you know, it's the contract. And, you know, the Mets were terrible in general, so everybody could easily throw uh, tomatoes Ooh. at them. But he ended up pretty good. <laughs> 31 home runs, 108 runs, and 98 RBIs. It's two away and 31 stolen bases. Yeah. And it kept the K rate under 20%, almost 10% walk rate. I mean, everything looks phenomenal there. Uh, I think the only thing holding him back is the fact that the next four is so good. Uh, what do we like about Francisco Lador? Yeah. I mean, look, proven player, a little bit inconsistent, unfortunately, like from year to year, it feels like. Um, and he, yeah, he had that horrific start, man. First half only batting two, 239. Thankfully, he was just, every time he hit it, it seemed like it was going out of the park. I mean, 19 home runs in the first half. That that kept him alive, you know, 13 steals. Uh, came back around, didn't hit for quite as much power in the second half, but the batting average came up 274. Steals, 18. Um one of just four players to hit 30-30 last year. So uh, that's pretty nice uh, company to be in. Right. Look, I mean, you just got to have to deal with some of the high, you know, some of the lows with the highs here with him, unfortunately, it feels like. So, um, you know, uh, he's just too talented not to not to rank any, any lower or to rank any lower than this. You know, the other thing, too, and I think some people forget, is he played 160 games last year and 161 days the year before, right? Some people were, like, worried about, you know, his, uh, you know, his ability to play and, you know, because of the 60 games in 2020 and, the, and uh, 125 in 2021. Well, 60 was the COVID year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Right. I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. But, you know, he was starting to get this, like, weird label of, like, being injury prone. Mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, I don't think it was obviously uh, something that um, – you deserve and, uh, and he's, shake, he's shaking that off very well. So if you're going to just draft and forget uh, Francisco Lindor is definitely a great pick in my mind. It, there's nobody in the Mets that's going to really push him. Uh, that uh, I can see. Yeah. I mean, he's going to get playing time. You know, they, they, they want that back, uh, especially considering how much they paid him. Mm -hmm. All right. So the guy who destroyed a few of my fantasy leagues last year, please tell us who number four is. <laughs> Bo Bichette. Uh, I think the issue is not that he didn't have a great season last year um, or ish, but what was expected versus what he delivered. Yes. I think is, I think is what the problem was. You um, know, I, I've come to terms with Boba Shett that this is just what he is. He's a good player, mm -hmm. but he may not ever live up to that. He's a first round pick player type guy in fantasy drafts. Right. Um, that's where a lot of people were taking him last year, late first, very early second. You know, teased us, right? In in 2021, the 29, 25 season, first full year in the MLB, um, 298, two, 2022. All right, a little, little, little back, you know, took a step back. That's okay. Got to figure it out. Pitchers are going to catch up to you. Still bad at 290. You still like what you saw, right? Then he went backwards again. Yeah, the batting average went up. Contact is still there, but man, everything else was just not great. And I get it. You know, the counting stats are going to drop a little bit because he only played 135 games. But even you project that out to like 160, it's still not up to even 2022 numbers. And so maybe the power, but the steals dropped with even with the new rules. Like that was just weird. You know, maybe it was the injury that held his, his speed back, but <clears throat> look, I, I just think he's he's a very good player. You are not going to be unhappy having him unless you overdraft him expecting the moon. I think he's just what he is at this point. Yeah, I, I got to say, I am one foot off the Bichette bandwagon. I, I, uh, I'm not saying I'm jumping, um, but, you know, I'm – and again, I'm not silly enough to think that 2021 is going to happen again. But 69 runs scored, I mean, that's that's a huge drop off. Yeah, but you're right. The talent's undeniable. There are so many great articles about, like, you know, basically, if somebody, you know, Vlad, Machete, if, if anybody has a father that previously played, you're going to end up, you know, happy. And of course, 
Kevin Biggio uh, showed you that that's not always the case. But I don't I look, I don't know what I'm going to get here. That's really what it comes down to. Is it yeah. out there? I mean, yes. look, you can get him at the end of the third now. You know, he's yeah. ADP at 29. So you're not having to take him with one of your even one of your first two picks anymore. So it's very okay, so, uh so third round. I, I know your rankings, right? But let's us uh, third round. I'm in a five by five standard league. CJ Abrams, Lindor, and Bichette are there. Who are you taking? And because mm. I'm telling you right now, I'm taking Lindor out of those three. <laughs> I get it. Um I, I'm I'm going I'm I'm going to stick to my guns. Go to my rankings. Um, okay. I I do like the 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 batting average that that Bichette. I think you can rely on. And okay. if there's one thing, especially in roto leagues, that I'm quickly learning, I have played in a lot more head to head leagues, so sometimes ratios aren't as um they're not as big of a deal in head to head weekly leagues, but in your roto style leagues, man, ratios, you get behind in the ratios. You're not catching up. Like right. he just, you can't do it. And so I'll find, I'll find some power later. Um, I think Bichette can, can get the wheels going again. I'm not buying a 30, 30 season out of Lador again, either. I think more like 2020 is probably more realistic. And if he but, drops down to that, but Bichette's going to be the better. Just role. say, and I'm not trying to, I'm just asking for those people <laughs> that the issue between Gunnar Henderson and CJ Abrams, right, was the huge change in stolen bases, trying to make up for that change in stolen bases. I mean, there's almost no stolen bases with Bichette, and you have Lindor putting what, 25 plus. I mean, is that is that not going to be your tiebreaker there? I, I got, no, I, I think, got, no, no, I, so I, that's the thing. I think. I think, um, yeah, but the difference in the batting average wasn't like 250 to almost 300. It was like 245 sure. to 260 right. <laughs> for for no. Henderson. No. So no. like that that doesn't that's not as big of a difference. You're talking like 35 plus steals extra for for Abrams over Gunnar Henderson, right? right. Um, and in this case, I you know I I think Bichette's gonna bounce back a little bit. He can hit 20 home runs. He can get 15 steals, right? I think. Right. And so if the projections that I'm thinking will hit more likely for Lindor are closer to like maybe 25, 20, 21, 22 steals, then that that drops the gap there. Then that batting average drop off is what really makes makes the difference there. It makes me want to take Bichette and I'll find the counting stats elsewhere. Okay. All right. So number three. <laughs> Can't believe you put the World Series champion. Here at number three, I mean, you know, that's what's been Corey Seager. I, I mean, re, that, not redemption year, but I'm, de I'm definitely, uh, I feel like the full coming out party came out this year. I mean, he was, I mean, you know, you had, you had last year where you were like, okay, you know, is he, is he going to do 33 again? I mean, he, he really came out. He loves, he loves moving to Texas. Let's be honest. Right. And then, but he almost replicated that. It, it, I mean, but by the way, in, 32 less games? Yeah. 130 and... 30 played appearances. Yeah. 100, 130, 20, whatever. We're not, we're not paid to make do math, but uh, I mean... I was going to wow. say 116 played appearances less. Yeah, and I mean, his walk yes. rate got better. Yeah, his K rate got went down by something. 1%. And his ISO just blew through the roof. I mean... Yeah. He crushed the ball last <laughs> year. Second off... Remember how many times last season we mentioned who's going to benefit the most from the lack of shift? Yep. Corey Seager. Man. Yeah, we, we, we huh. mentioned that. Yeah, we mentioned, Were we we mentioned right? that. A, yeah, yes. we mentioned that a few times. <laughs> he, um, yeah, his, uh, his batting average skyrocketed. Yep. Over 80 points higher than the season before. Um, yes, he has hit over 300 before. I get it. But man. He was just getting just destroyed by the shift in 2022. And without it, man, he just he hits the crap out of the ball and the defense aren't gonna stop it. Like right. ground balls are getting through. So 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna get uh thirty, you know, thirty three, you know, thirty three home runs and one hundred and twenty games again. He, he, but, he already did. He already did it, man. He's got to do it again. He's got to do thirty three <laughs> exactly that he quit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think thirty plus power, if if he is fully healthy, is easy to to uh, predict here. Um, no no speed. But the batting average and then playing that offense, uh, you know, he's going to score a ton of runs. Um, that's yeah. G- give me that all day, man. I-, I-, I love having the high average, the the RBI, the runs and just, you know, 30, 35, possibly 40 home run power. If everything clicks right, that's something that that's hard to make up. At 360 OBP, and the best part is, like, you know, his expected OBP was not that much off of that number. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's an inflated number uh, for next year. Um, and 390 last year, I mean, that's insane. He, I mean, his expected batting average was 312, and his real one was 327. So it's not like yeah. you're expecting much right. of a drop off. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, the only thing it's is, is H, H30 season. Okay. Uh, but that's all right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're going to tell me there's going to be a massive drop off, that's the only the, the only thing that I see in the uh, the expert the forecast is the ISO dropping by almost um, you know from point uh, so 296 to 237. That's kind of a 60 point drop off, and it's going to be interesting. But he does play in Texas, and so we do know that ballpark does like to enjoy power. I, I love me some Corey Seager. Uh, do we have an ADP on Corey Seager? Um, is he not? Okay. We have him at. 16. Wow. So we're getting into the pricey range here. Yeah. And uh, the next You're guy here, it. the next guy here, I am not, I, I paid up for him on a few dynasty leagues and I don't know if I'm going to do that again. Can we show us number two, please? Trey Turner. So, yeah. So we did this thing with Trey Turner last year when we did the Phillies team previews and we were like, there's no way he's going to achieve the stolen bases that you've ex- expected last year, right? He's not going over 25 again. And he did just that because he's a superstar and I am not a savant when it comes to this stuff. I mean, for him to go 100, you know, 100 plus runs, that was pretty much expected with the firepower that he, they had in the Phillies. The RBRs drop off, okay, kind of expected. That was kind of drastic, but the stolen bases stayed there, 27 to 30. I mean, I, I really expected it not to go above 25. Uh, walk rate almost exactly the same for the last three years 6.5 6.4 6.3 i mean can you be any more consistent k rate is starting to creep up there um, as we're getting up uh, but i don't see any kind of underlying stat here that freaks me out would i pick Corey seager over trey turner i mean i think so but it's it's close it's, it's tough um because you know you're not getting the steals yeah. From from Seager. Right. And look, you can look at last year's 266 batting average for Trey Turner and kind of be like, oh, yeah. What? But no, he's never, I mean, he is a career 296 batting average hitter. Yeah. That includes last year. Uh, so he is way better than that, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, I'm I'm thinking he's gonna bounce back there. Um He's not a top five player anymore. You know, he was going, you know, top one, two, three last year, whatever it was. Um, I'm assuming his batting average climbs back up. And, you know, we and we saw it right last year. The first half, he got off to a pretty bad start. First half, 10, 10 uh, home runs. Okay, that's fine for Trey Turner, right? Um, 19 stolen bases. Fantastic. 247 batting average that was that was bizarre uh then harper finally gets real you know going again you could tell that offense just clicked turner really got things turned around here in uh it was really august it took all the way into august to, you know, really for him to finally start clicking here in his second half overall 292 batting average 16 home runs that last the, the second half there, that was pretty incredible. I don't know if that kind of pace is going to continue. Um, you know, and that's what really propelled him. Like, so when you look at the final stats, right, the, like you just said, they're like identical right. to every other season he's had. Um, but it was a, it was definitely a tale of two seasons for him. He really uh, sunk a bunch of teams early on 
unfortunately, who who really paid the premium for him. You know, he's coming off the the World Baseball Classic where he just you know just destroyed. You know, and it it just it didn't carry over into the start of the season and it really hurt teams. But I think again, he's just a better player. And we've seen that a lot, like with these superstars that sign these massive contracts. I think I remember Manny, when he signed with San Diego, like it was horrible when he first got there. Right. 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 And then it was like, Oh man, he's okay. Never mind. It just, sometimes it takes a while to be like, Oh wait, I don't have to be the savior for this team. Right. They're already pretty good. Let me just go play. Uh, but also it just shows you, I mean, how important Bryce Harper is. I mean, he's the heart, the soul, he's everything. That he team. Catalyst for sure. I mean, you know, just in, it's hard to kind of under play down his, how important he is, but yeah, Trey mm-hmm. Turner, I mean, <laughs> that last, what, two months. I mean, that's, that's MVP caliber. Uh, I don't, yeah, I agree with you. I'm saying you can't yeah. draft him with that in mind, but, that was a hard season to see him every mm-hmm. day. You almost, if you can't drop him, uh, but at the same time, you kind of had to put your hand over it and be like, okay, I'm, I'm putting it on the bench. I mean, he, he was benchable some weeks for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was definitely hard to watch. Now from somebody who was benchable last year to somebody who just did everything he's supposed to do. And definitely and some, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, the, the junior to, to my senior, I, I don't know. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr., wow. I mean, he was he's exactly what everybody expected him to be. Uh, I don't remember many cold streaks, if any, off the top of my head. But, yeah, just outstanding from start to finish last year. Uh, yeah, I, and look, I'll be the first to admit I was a little wrong on this guy. Um, I remember saying, you know, fade Witt at his draft cost last year. He was going – I saw him go as high as, like, mid-first round – as late as late first round, you know, in most leagues, uh, I thought it was an overpay, right? I thought his batting average w- was something that he really wasn't going to improve on very much. Um, he, he swung at a very high percentage of outside the zone pitches, right. which you just can't do that. Right. You know, you, you would hope it would improve, but I needed to see it. Right. You need to see that happen first. Um, I didn't really buy in on the power improving either because if he swung at really bad pitches how's he going to be hit be able to hit him out of the park right he plays for the royals and i'm sorry royals fans you don't have a very good team so his runs and rbis i thought were going to be you know a little lower than than we would have hoped too he hit 96 and 90 which is 90 no sorry 97 and 96 damn good uh for for being on that team um and so, you know, I kind of was like, okay, you know, he's going to hit 250-ish, 25 home runs, 30 steals. That's that's fine. 165 to 170 runs in RBI. I could have gotten that with guys that were going much cheaper than him in drafts last year. But he outproduced massively. So, yeah. you know, he, he improved his plays discipline. He stopped swinging at really bad as many bad pitches he raised average 22 points um expected batting average was actually 297 so there's a chance he could even improve more which is crazy right i mean he can be a legit 30 home run 40 steal even 50 steal guy 275 batting average even if you don't you know if you're not buying into the to the more improvements that is something i am much more willing to pay up for at this point the thing is, we, we didn't expect the, you know, the K rate um, or the, the the locks to kind of stay close to where they were last year. In fact, he improved on that K rate. And, and the other thing that threw me off completely, because there's no way anybody would have just, uh, thought this, his Babbitt, right? His batting average of balls in play was exactly the same as last year. I thought for sure that was going to crater because, like you said, he was, he was swinging at some bad pitch. And yes, his quality is great, but you just... What you saw in 2022, to expect that 2023, just there's so many improvements. And I absolutely will you know, you'd be happy to eat my microphone um, as an apology to Bobby Wood Jr. But yeah, I mean, it's it's not even, I'm sorry, it's not even close in, in the sense of what else we're doing here. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, like the other ones we're doing, like, you know, here's one and two together. This yeah. one is far and away uh, with the age. He's only 24 next year. It's That's nuts. Uh, I mean, you legitimately could see a 30-plus home run, 100-plus run, 100-plus RBI, and 
50 stolen bases. That's that's a stupid. Uh, I mean, yeah. I just, there's only uh, one other position where I'm like, first is on his own planet, and it's yeah, out of the wanna, three left. You want it? You want you want a tease? I think everybody can probably figure it out pretty quickly which one is it real, is. It's really so there's efficient. third base, outfield, and pitchers left. Which one do you think has the one that's by himself? Uh, relief pitcher. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, let's see. Do we carry the one on third base? No, 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 no. Outfield? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Ding, ding, ding. No. We have a yeah. winner. Yeah, I can't wait uh, to see that because I know exactly who number one is, but I'd love to see the, the next nine. If you also would like to uh, see the rest of our top tens, we're going to be posting these every three days. Uh, assuming that we're in healthy condition uh, and get these out to you right away. Thank you so much for watching our sh uh, shortstop top 10. We'll be getting the next one out here pretty soon. And as always, if you have any questions or have any feedback, please hit us up on Twitter uh, at F6P underscore Joe or myself at Dap Scout. We look forward to seeing you here next time. Thank you so much for joining.